Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today to talk about diversity of thought. And today we're going to discuss connecting the dots. What is diversity of thought and how can we in the construction industry, and particularly as women in the construction industry, use diversity of thought to increase the impact that we have? I'm Brenda Rodmacher. I am a construction lawyer with the law firm of Gordon Reese Skelly Mansacani in Los Angeles, California. And I uh, am very excited to be with you today and to have a conversation. Um, I'm going to share a little bit. We'll have some time for question and answer at the end. And i uh, love to hear your feedback and your comments of where you're seeing diversity of thought impact your careers, your teams, your companies, and your industry. So let's jump in. We don't have a lot of time, so I want to jump in and get to the content and talk about diversity of thought. So diversity of thought, what is it? And I think we want to talk generally first um, about what we're going to cover today. Diversity of thought in your teams, interdepartmentally among your companies and what collaboration can look like and how diversity of thought can impact uh, effective communication, as well as diversity of thought and how that impacts the players in the construction cycle. So let's start first of all with what in the world we're talking about, diversity of thought. This is an idea that people in a group don't need to look differently or identify with an underrepresented group in order to bring varying diverse viewpoints to the table. And we can have diversity of thought in a lot of ways. And a lot of times we've been talking about diversity and inclusion and we oftentimes think of that as particular groups, uh, whether it be by racial or ethnic background, gender and the like, but diversity can also come to us in a different manner of how we think. And so we're gonna talk a little bit today of why the thought process and how you think, the perspectives that you bring and what you do with that how that can impact your life, your careers, and your companies, as well as our industry. So what can we look at as far as what we're going to talk about in the few minutes we have together today? Diversity of thought, first of all, we're going to start with among your teams, with the groups that you are working with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I want to highlight some ideas that I have for you to think about as you're working together. Secondly, we're going to talk about diversity of thought interdepartmentally. So within your company and your organization, how different groups and different departments can interact and why and how diversity of thought is something that you should be considering even as you're working internally. And then thirdly, at the final level, we're going to talk most broadly about diversity of thought among the players in the construction cycle. And we'll jump right in. So viewpoints are something that we oftentimes think about, hear about, but sometimes we don't really see how our viewpoint can create differences in how we think. Um, I've read a lot by Selena Resvani, who is a corporate diversity consultant and author of a book that I found very interesting called Pushback, How Smart Women Ask and Stand Up for What They Want. She says this, diversity of thought yields a kind of positive friction from varying approaches, training, and mindsets. That very friction of rub made up of the disagreement and often laugh, lengthier processing time of different team members is what makes diverse teams higher performing collectively compared to homogeneous ones. So it's fascinating, the studies have shown that diverse teams with people of different backgrounds, perspectives, ethnics, ethnicities, and races oftentimes are higher performing compared to a homogenous group. And she is indicating her belief, and I think there's got a lot of foundation to it, that diversity of thought is one of the key markers that creates these synergies. Because what ends up happening with diversity of thought, and I love the light bulb shaped ideas of what we have here, of different people of how they think um, and what that does 
to our conversations, our approaches, our communications, and how we approach strategies, how we approach problems, how we approach communication and planning, and what that's finding over time. It may take a little longer for these diverse teams to come to an agreement on how to proceed, but we're finding higher performance, better results as a collective whole. Now, what I wanna do is challenge you to start thinking about your team and diversity of thought in order to build a stronger team. And I love this image of thinking about the different ways of thinking, strategy, concepts, searching, data, imagination, plans, production, and we all operate in a different way, don't we? And oftentimes different thinking can create that friction that Rizvani was talking about, and that can lead to conflict even. So if someone pro approaches a problem differently from you, I want you to think not, oh, they're wrong, or that was a silly idea. But one of the things that's important to recognize is how do you respond when someone thinks differently about a problem with you? And more importantly, can you think differently and step into the shoes of those around you? Can you consider their perspective? Now, it's important to think about that others are gonna come at things with a different manner. And as you're working with your team, the challenge is to see if you can think differently than you already normally would. Can you put yourself into someone else's shoes and understand their perspective and where they're coming from? And secondly, can you be open to and actually have and consider others' ideas and thoughts before just dismissing them? So what we're really talking about essentially at the bottom line in diversity of thought is thought processes that are different cultures almost because the way people think may be partially impacted by their culture, but it's a the culture of thought. Um, somebody may approach things in a very linear manner. Other people may approach it in more of a conceptual fashion. So that diversity of thought is going to lead you to different perspectives, different ideas, different viewpoints. And you're gonna to need to learn to communicate across those different cultures of thought. So communicating across your culture is key. It's how you can understand that we may have different cultures and perspectives as individuals, as teams, as departments, and even as players within the construction life cycle. So here's the challenge. First, think about and be considerate that others may have different ways of thinking than yours. And it's because it's different doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just different. It may be not better. And then what we secondly wanna do is if you have a situation or a problem that others may think differently about, ask questions and formalize your communication. So if you're working in a team and you're approaching something in a very logical fashion that's very, document-based and someone else is coming at this problem from a different perspective and they aren't following a logical flow, you know, what to do is not just dismiss it out of hand, but you want to take, consider, and ask them, how are you coming about this idea? Where did you get this from? Why do you think it's way, good to think about these ways? Asking those questions, make yourself a journalist, put yourself in their shoes, and think about why they're thinking the way they are, consider that they may have a different perspective. And third, the key there is try to see the situation from their perspective. By doing that within your teams, you're gonna be able to take those different portions of diversity of thought, put them together and come up with what you might find more often than not will be a more robust solution. So your communication is key. Who's on your team? Um, what are their ideas? Do you encourage others to think differently? Think about the last time you had a team meeting and was everybody standing around just nodding along with whatever the person speaking was saying or were questions raised? Did somebody say, well, how come? Were there challenges to the assumptions that the room had? Um, sometimes we um, can think of you know, the person who's a leader or the boss, we must all just agree with them. Uh, and that leads not to diversity of thought, but to commonality. 
And sometimes things will get missed. I want you to think about the last time you've seen a movie about a jury trial. Um, I think about the movie Runaway Jury with John Cusack in it. And, you know, there was a very carefully planned, uh, a planted juror, essentially. And he was able, through sharing ideas with the different jurors, to help sway and persuade their thought. And, and it's interesting because what he was able to do was influence the way people thought, influence their perspectives by bringing other ideas. And that's why diversity of thought is important because it actually can persuade, but you've got to be open to it. Now, let's talk a little bit more about diversity of thought interdepartmentally. So more than just your team, because you also will get to know your team members well, you're really working together on something. But sometimes when we're working on a project, um, we're dealing with other departments. If you're in marketing, you may be dealing with the operations team, or you might be dealing with legal, or you may be dealing with marketing uh, and accounting. And there's going to be diversity of thought based on the, the roles that these different departmental groups play. So it's important to understand that your team brings cultures together and perspectives. And it's fascinating because the question comes again, is how can we connect the dots between the various parties in our departments, within our organization, where we're all going for the same goal, but we may have different priorities. So it's important to, again, consider who are the different parties within your interdepartmental collaboration that's needed and think about their perspective, their thoughts, and where their approach is. A lot of times I get asked as the lawyer, um, gosh, it's the last person that you wanna hear from because it feels like we're saying no or put the brakes on or asking the hard questions. And what you wanna do and I would encourage you to do is the next time you feel that legal is saying, no, don't consider them just the bad guy but consider why they're asking the questions they're asking, why they're making the recommendations, what their thoughts are on it, ask those questions, pursue their ideas, gather their perspective, and incorporate that into what you're doing. And partnering and thinking of the diversity of thought by department and utilizing those and how can you build a stronger, broader, larger team as a whole and partnering across those departments. Now, what we wanna do is take this then to uh, the next level of what are this going on with the construction cycle partners. First of all is who are they? And most of you who are involved in this industry know we've got so many players. This graphic gives us a handful of them, contractors, of course, owners, subcontractors, designers, architects and engineers, the consultants, the lawyers aren't anywhere on there. The marketing team isn't on there. The procurement folks. We've got so many partners in the construction cycle that participate in putting together a project. And one of the areas where we see disputes arise is between and among these construction cycle partners. And what I'd encourage you to consider is using the diversity of thought to produce a more successful project. Now you wanna think about this of who's coming from what perspective, again, asking those good questions. Contractors are often going to think about the practical approach of how to build the project, what's needed to get the job done, while the owner is gonna be focused on completion of the project, tight timelines, the budget, uh, profitability metrics, and those types of issues. And oftentimes those are in conflict with each other, even just between the contractor and the owner. But if the contractor can be understanding the thought perspective and the diversity of thought that is brought by the owner, they really put themselves into those shoes of one another and are able to view from the other's perspective. That's going to result in better communication and ultimately a more successful project. Sometimes with consultants, they're brought in um, to evaluate the risks. They're brought in to evaluate a problem that's even arisen and are oftentimes helping in communications um, among the parties. Um, they can be the owner's representative, but again, knowing who the consultant is, what their role is in the process, 
how they fit in and thinking about what is their perspective they bring will help you. Similarly, the design team, they're focused often on making the project work structurally or aesthetically. The subcontractors are working on the details. Suppliers have a role as well and all of the parties involved. Everyone's coming together to try to effectuate a, pro a, proper, a project that's going to be meeting the ultimate goal, but getting there sometimes is a wavy line or even among these different communication lines on this, this graphic will show. And so with communication, thinking back to communicating among your team, diversity of thought and how that can really impact you and cause you to have a better understanding as to where the other is coming from. Why is this an RFI? Uh, how could they not understand this? I, you know, those different questions, um, instead of thinking about it, that they didn't think through this the same way I did, recognize the diversity and maybe there's benefit to be had. Asking the, those good questions and considering the other's perspective will help you as you seek to effectuate a project that's going to be successful. Now, diversity, um, has been defined as the art of thinking independently by Malcolm Forbes. And I thought that's great. It's thinking independently together. And we often don't do that in our thought processes. And in diversity, we oftentimes think of diversity as someone who's just different from me. What I would encourage you with diversity of thought is to consider the idea that the idea of individuals, teams, departments, or different construction parties coming together after they've thought independently and together combining those thoughts, combining those ideas and approaches are going to be a way that is going to produce something dynamic uh, and hopefully more productive and effective. Now, I'd love you to consider that you think about what the roles are, particularly as we're in our industry players, we often get stuck in our silos, don't we? Where we, we think about things from our own perspective, um, the owner or the client um, is just defining the aesthetic or functional needs. They might define product requirements. They wanna you know, define timelines, um, which is going to create a very different approach to handling a situation compared to a consultant who may be a lawyer like myself assessing risk or res defining risks, performance requirements and the like, um, those are going to be focused on a very specialized area and might disregard other performance requirements that are called out for by the architect or the engineer um, where we've got specific requirements and reasons. And having a dialogue, having a conversation that is informed with the idea that there's diversity of thought from party to player and from architect to contractor and subcontractor, as we indicate here, are going to really give you fabulous ideas to have a better line of communication, have a better understanding of why someone's raising an issue and to help you do your job even more effectively. Now, a very wise man, Albert Einstein, said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. And I think that applies to diversity and diversity of thought, where oftentimes we continue to hit against the wall and say, I've got this problem, I'm going to use the same approach and the same thinking, and, and it's not working. And, but what I would encourage you to do is to take these ideas Diversity of thought and how others perspectives, their approaches, their thought processes can impact how to solve a problem in a different way. And maybe, and hopefully you'll be able to accomplish that in your teams by uh, understanding that someone may be approaching a problem in a different fashion and there's value to that asking questions of those team members to find out why they've approached things the way they have uh, and recognizing and valuing the contributions that these people with different approaches to you are bringing. And then take that beyond your team 
interdepartmentally, understanding that each department has a role to play and it's valuable, understanding and asking those questions and implementing ideas that are being brought to the table from your different departmental groups. And finally, exploding that idea to your construction cycle partners and working with them to create these fabulous and fantastic projects. And by doing so, I think what we do is we recognize not only diversity of thought, but the diversity of the whole person that brings that thought together. And I would hope this will put you all into a, a mindset that each person has value and that you can impact on a day-to-day -day basis your projects by thinking carefully through why and how this diversity comes to us in our thoughts as well as in the whole of who we bring. So with that, we'll take some questions. I hope that you have um, some taken some from this and look forward to hearing your questions and discussion on that. Have a great day.